Binary gives us two options, yes or no, on or off. But what if everything in life isn't so black and white? I'm Nora Spinner from Netism, and today I'm going to be explaining to you why this missing third is important for math and metaphysics. And if you're new to Netism, please check out netism.org and go to livingnetism.com. You'll find a lot of information on those websites. And I just published my first book, The Young Man and the Sage. It is an alchemical fiction. It's a philosophical journey of awakening. So why is ternary important? Why should we not use binary? Well, binary limits us to two states, true or false. And in the real world, it's not really all that effective for tracking things like life habits, for tracking waveforms, um, for tracking things like rise, fall, or stay, um, yes, no, or wait, expansion, contraction, or rest. It's um, in the real world, boundaries are rarely all that clear. There's rarely a defined line between one state or another. Think of how a color wheel, you know, you have that interim state where colors blend and things are, you know, undefined. It's in between. We have these all the time in life where we can look back and say, I am in this state now. And I was in that state when, then, but when did I change? That's that middle ground that we're missing within binary systems. And binary systems can't do cumulative tracking. It's just, um, you can take an average, but within the ternary system, because there's that negative to even things out, we can use cumulative tracking. So we can track, um, a record for a long period of time and come up with a sum that gives us a trend of any set amount of time. So ternary systems were actually on the table for computer code when it was first coming out, but binary went over because overall it had less errors. And this was in the 1950s, but the Soviet Union did have a computer that used a ternary system and it represented positive and negative functions seamlessly. It had more efficient calculations with less energy. So it's something that we could definitely reconsider now with our advances in technology. It's, it's something to think about. So the netism system um, uses the names Atum, Zero, and Heka. And I will explain this to you. It's the plus, the minus, and the hold. Atum is the name. It comes from ancient Egyptian mythology. Atum was the first emanation from nothingness, from the primordial state of the universe. So it is that first conscious leap. And netism, it represents that male active force. It's the, it's that first conscious spark from the threshold. And this can be represented on the macroscopic and in the microscopic. Alchemically, it links to fire and to air. And it is represented by the number principles one, five, and seven. And to understand these, you will get a lot more information within my numerology videos. And we'll link those down below. So Atum is the active creative spark, but it alone cannot really do anything. It has to have Heka, which is that negative patterning pole. So we don't think of negative as bad. We're thinking of negative as that inward, reflective, contractive pole. And Heka is that patterning force. So we know within nearly any metaphysical creation myth, there is 
first there's the cr creative thought that that first recognition of consciousness and then there is sound there is that patterning force well that's heka that is our yin force and that's related to the alchem alchemical elements water and earth and is represented by the number principles two, four, and eight. And these are, um, we can think of how two, four, and eight add, they reflect each other. We can multiply or divide. Um, water is really a multiplying force. So when we're thinking of negatives, don't think of it as subtracting, think of it as pulling it down and maybe even multiplying as it's going along it's it's the patterning force that brings ultimate coherence and zero zero is that solid state and the equilibrium within a torus which is that donut structure zero is that stable force that energy cycles around it's the backbone of everything. So atoms have a toroidal structure. Our Earth, the forces within the magnetic currents, have that same toroidal structure. It really is within everything. Within the wave function, zero are these points of coherence. And they're these points of coherence is where alignment happens. So this is a very sacred part within the triplicity in netism. It is the part that holds everything together. Um, in ancient Egypt, there is the columns of Mahat. And these are the columns within the cosmos that keep everything stable. Well, it's the same columns inside atoms that are keeping them within a coherent flow. It needs all three parts. It needs the positive, the negative, and that stabilizing current that connects to everything. So zero is undifferentiated. It is all elements together in their primordial state. So nothing's expressed. Everything is potential. Zero is everything before it hits that moment of threshold. Before it goes through that atomic leap, it is, it is all elements. It's the void, but the void is full. It's eternally primordial. And this is represented by numbers three, six, and nine. And if you go to the video on three, six, and nine, you will understand how these really relate to that, um, that alignment, that balance. Um, it is is incredibly important in in netism's cosmology. So over here, I've got an alchemy example for how we can use cumulative tracking. Uh, each of these alchemy symbols relates to a day of the week. Uh, so we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and. These, I'm using three numbers to, so that we can represent a trend. And I have these numbers expressed so that while I'm going over this, I can give you a little alchemy lesson on how each one of these numbers represents alchemically. And then you'll see that over here, this is the value. This is the actual cumulative total. And over here, these numbers, these are not to confuse you. These are principles. These are the principles of the energy, and they'll make a lot more sense if you look at my other videos on numerology. And those will be linked down below. So on Sunday, on Sunday, we have zero, zero, zero. And this is because we always have to start from zero. We have to start from that place of perfect potential. And we have to end there too, because it's a cycle. You know, everything has to go through that period of refresh. So Sunday would be that day where you take a break, you stop activities and 
you, it's not even internal reflection. It is alignment. It is meditation. It is taking that moment to realign with that source, the net, the sense of everything. Monday. Monday is related to the moon, and the moon is the calming, reflective yin energy. We have two negatives here because the this is closely linked to our our root. It's linked to the sacral energy center, the reproductive energy center within the negative within the netism system. And this is our lower subconscious emotions. So that's why there are two negatives. It's more closely towards the material realms and even down beneath them within the subconscious, the pre-material realms, the things that we carry even in between lives. And with the two negatives, this gives us a negative two. So on a chart, on a, on a wave map, we would see it as a steep downward. Mars. Mars is Tuesday, and it is the opposite of Luna. It is that active male force that wants to create. Mars is often seen as destructive, and it definitely can be. When it's not balanced with Luna, it can definitely be all over the place. A tomb needs the patterning force of Heka in order for creation to continue to unfold. So that's Tuesday. It's the positive two. And it's represented by the number five, which is related to physical creation. So it's that steep rise, and this is good. We like Mars energy. On Wednesday, this is, this is Mercury, and this is balanced. Um, Mercury is in the middle within the netism energy centers, one through nine. It is in the middle. It is the solar plexus, and it is associated with will. So that's why this one is balanced and it is related to the number six because six is also related to the material realms. But whereas five is active creation, six is balanced form. So that's Mercury. And Jupiter, Jupiter is Thursday and Jupiter is our higher emotional center. So where Luna was closely linked to the material and the subconscious, Jupiter is related to the spirit and the higher conscious. So Jupiter is actually related to the realm of intent. So this is the energy that we apply into our actions that makes such a powerful change on the net. So I put two zeros here because it's more linked to the source field. It's more linked to that higher alignment energy. And it's negative one on tracking. So you would see it down here as less of a steep pole than the negative two. And it's related to eight. And that's on our numerological system. That's the one that's linked to the throat center. And I'm sorry, it's linked to the breath center and it is linked to intent and um, higher emotional energy. Venus is Friday. Now, Venus is all the way down at the root. This is our spiritual seed. This is the seed that we carry from life to life. It is our spark our inner fire, our purpose, our most essential drive. What we carried into this life to do, whatever that purpose may be, that was in, is in the fire of Venus. So I put it as number three, which is the first stable form. This is very primordial energy. And Saturday, Saturday is the companion to Jupiter, um, where Jupiter is reflective, Saturn is creative. 
So this is mental energy. This is thought, creative thought. It's intuition. It's pulling from the net. And this is just a plus one. It's because it's closer related to the source field. And that is the principle of number seven. So this ternary model has a lot of uses. And I hope that you see how you can use it through metaphysical tracking as well as real life applications. If you understand the model of Atum, Heka, and Ziru, you are well on your way to understanding netism because it is this triplicity of forces that within everything, that within our daily actions, as well as things within a cosmological scale. So if you have any questions or comments, please drop them below because we read every one and definitely stay tuned because we're going to be coming out with a lot more information. Thanks for watching.